Hey, I think that's a pretty good find. That's fine. Good find, boy. Let's see this one. You come over here. Let's see you. How old are you? What are you? A number of the teeth have decayed cavities in them. And that has happened because he's not eating enough fish or not getting enough milk. Say, you're a fine, big, strong fella. How old are you? Why, you look as though you were a giant. My, my. Where'd you come from? Barbara. Well, that's the place. Did you had lots of fish when you were a little boy? Yeah. That's the stuff that makes good bodies. If everybody do that, the most universal disease in the world is the decay of the teeth. And unfortunately, we have not known the cause until we've gone to the primitive people to find how they prevent tooth decay. Our difficulty is that we are adding too much white flour and sugar and do not get enough of the foods that carry the minerals and vitamins. When the primitive people adopt the food of modern civilization, their teeth decay just as ours do. He first visited Switzerland to study whether greater nutrition could be obtained from foods produced at higher altitudes, such as in the Swiss Alpines. He discovered the isolated Lechenthal Valley, a community compelled by its very isolation to eat locally produced foods. Here he made physical examinations of teeth, recorded data, collected menus, and made photographs of the people. Samples of food and saliva were taken for later analysis in his laboratory. The children had well-formed teeth, good physiques, and an apparent immunity to disease and dental problems. They ate mainly dairy products, whole rye bread, and plant foods such as potatoes and cabbage. Meat was eaten sparingly, usually only once a week. In contrast, Swiss children living in modernized districts had widespread tooth decay, facial and dental arch deformities, and greater susceptibility to disease. Their diet, refined flour, a high intake of sweets, chocolate, sweetened fruits, and a reduced use of dairy products. On his next journey, Dr. Price visited the Outer Hebrides, located off the coast of Scotland. Here, he made similar studies among the Gaelic people who inhabit these isolated islands. These rather barren islands have very few trees and little fertility. The islands are often subjected to rough seas and blizzards from the North Atlantic. Most of the people are of early Scottish descent, possessing a physique that rivals that found almost any place in the world. Their teeth are of unusual perfection. The basic foods of these islanders are fish and oat products, such as oatmeal, whole grain breads, and shellfish. But when the islanders were exposed to the foods of commerce, it was a repetition of what had been found in Switzerland. Bad teeth and general physical degeneration was the result. For example, these two brothers lived under the same roof, but ate differently. The older ate primitive foods and was in excellent health. The younger had extensive tooth decay and a poor physique from eating the foods of commerce. In 1933, Dr. and Mrs. Price visited Alaska to study the Eskimos, one of the last examples of a Stone Age people. The areas they visited were isolated. Travel was often very difficult. Among the Eskimos, Dr. Price discovered examples of physical excellence and dental perfection seldom found anywhere else in the world living in isolated districts on native foods. They had uniformly broad dental arches and typical Eskimo facial patterns. Their general health was excellent. The Eskimos ate foods rich in minerals and vitamins, mainly caribou, kelp, berries, fresh fish, organs of large sea animals, and seal oil. 
when the Eskimos were exposed to the foods of commerce, there was a marked rise in dental decay and a change in facial and dental arch formation. Dental service was not readily available, and dental pain was often acute among these people. These Indians inhabited northern British Columbia and the Yukon Territory, an area inside the Rocky Mountain Range. This isolated area had to be reached by water and over roads that often were almost impassable. Long ago, these Indians discovered that the white man got scurvy when forced to live for long periods of time in this area where fresh fruits and vegetables were often not available. To avoid this dreaded disease, the Indians ate the adrenal gland and organs of moose and caribou. This gave them the necessary vitamin C, the vitamin that prevents scurvy. Primitive groups of Indians consistently had well-formed facial and dental arches that represented the tribal pattern. But new generations exposed to the foods of commerce obtained at trading posts or through government agencies, showed marked changes in facial and dental arch forms. Extensive tooth decay was quite evident. By 1934, Dr. Price decided to study the various people who inhabit the many islands of the South Pacific, New Zealand was also included in his studies. Dr. and Mrs. Price lived with these people, collecting and studying data about their living conditions. Surprisingly, he found that people who ate the foods of the area, shell and scale fish, plant roots, and tropical fruits, had developed a very high immunity to dental decay. Also, they had well-formed faces and good dental arches. In their primitive state, less than 1% of their teeth were attacked by tooth decay. But as though echoing a warning from nature herself, the message was clear. Those who ate foods outside their natural diets had a rise in tooth decay of over 29%. In 1935, Dr. and Mrs. Price went on one of their longest trips, some 6,000 miles to study 30 different African tribal groups. These people lived in the Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, the Congo, and Tanganyika. Africa was a fertile area for studying primitive peoples, last of the large continents to be invaded and explored by civilized man. It had one of the largest native populations living under primitive conditions. The primitive Africans were healthy, robust people. They had good teeth and fine dental arches. Their overall physique was excellent. Their diet, dairy products, fish, vegetables, and eggs of certain species. An important source of fat-soluble vitamin is the blood of steers. It is a basic food of the Maasai, people of outstanding physiques. For those who ignored tribal nutritional laws, 
characteristic types of deformity and tooth decay frequently developed. One of Dr. and Mrs. Price's last journeys was to Peru. Here, he compared modern Peruvian society with the ancient Incas. This was done by examining more than 1,000 human skulls of the ancients. Dr. Price did not find one significant deformity of the dental arches. He also found examples of early brain surgery, evidence of the high degree of civilization of the ancients. Primitive Peruvian Indians, subsisting on natural foods indigenous to their country, were healthy and robust, with fine teeth and sturdy bodies. But those who ate the foods of commerce were degenerating and dying rapidly. This was another warning, another indication to obey nature's laws. Dr. Price discovered that with individuals undergoing a degenerative process, a chemical analysis of the food disclosed a marked reduction in the intake of some of the important vitamins and minerals. Even primitive societies share our blight when they eat our food. Dr. Price discovered a substance he called Activator X. It belongs in the fat-soluble group. He recognized that the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and F had been deficient in practically every case of active tooth decay. He found that an essential characteristic of the successful dietary programs of primitive societies related to a liberal source of the fat-soluble activator group, such as is found in seafood, especially fish roe, bird's eggs, butter fat of mammals' milk, organs of animals, and insects. Even though the diets of primitive people differed greatly as to type and source, all diets provided a large increase in water-soluble vitamins over modern diets by at least a factor of four, and at least ten times more of the fat-soluble vitamins and mineral activators than the displacing diets of commerce. Quality rather than quantity was the important factor. Since these foods were unrefined, they also supplied from two to eight times the minimum daily requirements of calcium and phosphorus, and up to 28 times that of magnesium. The entire treatment of food, from planting to preparation, was important. Dr. Price believed that changes in nutrition could occur with a change in agricultural methods, and that there was a direct relationship between poor quality foods and the depletion of the minerals in the soil. Primitive societies were aware of the relationship between what they ate and their own reproduction, so nutrition was carefully planned for expectant mothers. When the foods of commerce were substituted for their natural diet, there was evidence of abnormal facial patterns and susceptibility to certain diseases. This Maori family demonstrates the link between nutrition and birth deformities. The eldest child has a normal, well-formed body. After her birth, the parents moved to a plantation and began to eat the foods of commerce. Their second child has a depressed face and flat feet. The next child has club feet. The parents returned to a primitive diet, and later two children were born without defects. Proper diet helped produce children without deformities, 
giving hope for all parents of the future. Thank you.